four o'clock, ready to go. Here we are. Welcome everybody to the Chain Bikes webinar, the five steps to run a successful BTM business. I'm Mike Salvi, your host. Here with me is our CEO, Eric Grill, and our sales director, Keith Smith. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Hey, thanks. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for having us. Hey, it's my pleasure. So we're here to explain the process to the five steps of how to run a successful BTM business and uh, how to get set up, how to get started. Uh, any questions, feel free to submit them through the chat and we'll address them uh, towards the end. And so who wants to, which of you wants to go first? Who wants to take the very first step in how to start your BTM business? Well, first, my name is Keith. I'm the director of sales here at Chain Bites. Um, first thing you got to do to start an ATM business is to talk to somebody that can explain to you how the Bitcoin ATM business works. Um, that would be one of our salespeople. Uh, somebody that's knowledgeable about the business because there's not that much information on the internet about Bitcoin ATMs. It's not something that uh, you can just, uh, you know, kind of like learn on a whim. You kind of have a, you kind of have to know a little bit about the industry and how the business works. That's how I, you know, that's the first thing I would, I would mention. Um, I, I have a customer trying to get through to me right now on, <laughs> on the phone and, and, and our web chat. And I told him that we're in the webinar, so I can't speak to him right now, but that's uh, like I told him, he, he wants to buy a Bitcoin ATM. Um, the best thing to do is to speak to one of us because we can talk to you, explain to you how Bitcoin ATMs work how the business works, you know, who we are, what we do, what we provide. And from there, we can, uh, you know, kind of explain all the questions because there's so many questions that you're going to have. And we're, you know, if you're interested in the business, we're here to explain how that works. Oh, hi, I'm Mark Rell. I'm the CEO of Chainbytes. And uh, like Keith said, you know, it should be easy for people to get Bitcoin. Uh, these machines certainly make it easy for uh, end customers to buy and sell Bitcoin, as well as give operators an opportunity to make a lot of money. Uh, you know, being that middle person, uh, you know, to, for people to acquire them. Um, you know, I think uh, that all these people have showed up here uh, as an interest into the into the Bitcoin ATM space, uh, you know, shows there's a lot of demand for it. Uh, you're seeing them show up all over the place from store owners to to other traditional ATM vending machine operators all, all wanting in on this. Um, so it's good to see. And uh, let's get started. You're on mute. That's right, the mute button got stuck. All right, uh, so this is a good question that leads into the very first thing, which is uh, how to choose the right BTM for your business needs. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with really understanding the market and you know what it is you wanna be providing for them. So what would you guys say is what's the first step in how to choose the right B BTM? I would say you'd, you'd want an ATM that can support you in fleet operations. I mean, what are, you have to ask yourself, what kind of business are you getting into? Is this going to be a hobby? If it's going to be a hobby, then this is not the type of business I'd recommend for you. Um, but if you're looking to be in an actual business and operate in fleet operations, uh, you know, you're going to want something that's like our hardware and software system where it's plug and play and where it's easy for you as an operator to run your own Bitcoin ATM business. Um, so I, I, I like to suggest uh, chain blades, Bitcoin ATMs, obviously, but um, there's a reason why, because you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to have programming knowledge. You shouldn't have to have uh, to run all kinds of servers to operate your Bitcoin ATM business. Um, you, we built, we built it so you don't have to do that. And that's really important. All right. Like, like uh, Keith said, one of the, one of the things that we've tried to do is take out the, uh, the, the hard aspect of even if you've done a traditional ATM, setting it up is quite a complicated process. You put this very long key in there to get it set up, uh, whereas these machines are very plug and play. And, and so they can operate them remotely. They can do pretty much all of their configuration remotely. Um, so that, that helps the operator, instead of being in his business, can work on his business and, and look at uh, you know, what, where, where he can potentially do better in marketing or, or customer service. Okay. Uh, and the different types of ATMs that, uh, that are out there and that Chainbytes offers as well. So we've got, we, we used to have two models, um, the, the, the Chain Bytes uh, two-way and the Chain Bytes uh, plus, and we used to have a one-way. Uh, we discontinued the one-way. And the reason we discontinued is because we haven't sold one in an entire year. And those that did have them replaced them with two-ways. 
Uh, the reason they replace those one ways with two ways is because two ways do exponentially better than one ways do. It's a, a, it's a human psychological thing where the customers actually want to, you know, they, if, they, if they put money in a machine, they want to be able to get it back out. So people prefer two ways. And so two ways do much higher volume. Why have a, have a good location where you're doing less volume, we, you can be doing more volume. So two ways have been all that we've been selling. So we discontinued the one way. And then we had the Chain Bytes two way and the Chain Bytes Plus. We decided what we were going to do is combine that as one model. And that's where we're, we're really, we're, we just started releasing them last month, the Chain Bytes Universal. You can get it with an SNG lock in it. It's SNG lock ready. So you don't have to get an SNG lock. You can get one after the fact if you want to. But you can also get an additional top screen. And that additional top screen is an extra $300. Uh, it, that was, that's probably just as good. Of, uh, we've sold just as many of those as just the single screen model. But that's because uh, operators like to have that additional top screen so they can either, they're basically advertising their ATM. It catches your eye. It makes the ATM, it's a taller ATM, but it stands out. And so they'll put a slideshow on there since, you know, Bitcoin ATM, uh, you, know, uh, you know, buy your first Bitcoin here, stuff like that. And they'll even put like little instruction manual on, you know, that goes across the screen, tells people how to download their own Bitcoin wallet. Uh, we also are releasing a new Bitcoin ATM called the Chain Bytes 5. And so that model is right there behind Eric. And that's, that's our newest model. And so it, we've got two models, but one model is, you know, that, that model there comes with SNG lock. So it's got the SNG lock locked in there. And SNG locks are pretty important, especially today because banks and the um, uh, cash logistics companies, uh, armed guard services, they're, they're requiring SNG locks. So, and that, that, that provides an audible trail of, you know, who took the cash from there and how did it get to the bank? So there's no cash missing and whatnot. So it's actually, it, it's much more secure. So compared to, you know, our competitors and our previous model, the inside is reinforced and that SNG lock is like in a solid box, which, you know, is great for security. I guess you're suggesting chain bytes machines then. <laughs> kind of what it sounds like. Okay, okay, so yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep, I'm suggesting chain bytes machines. So, yes, <laughs> um, good suggestion. So, once you get your machines, step two is a uh, compliance registering compliance. Yeah, I mean, so, as you as you're ordering your machine, you're gonna get you're gonna start down the compliance route. Like traditional ATM guys didn't need to really do much of this. They had the the banks do it. Um, so this is where we have partner companies that we work with, where they'll take over and start up a risk assessment and an anti-money laundering program. And they'll work with them to come up with the program that they're gonna need uh, on a federal level and on a state level, depends on where they are. So, uh, you know, that, that, that one's, you know, the, I guess that's outside of the scope of here, but you do that sort of in parallel, you order your machines and as you're waiting for your machines to be delivered, you're, you're taking on the, uh, the compliance end of it. Most don't have to register in the state, so it goes pretty quickly. The ones that do might take a little bit longer. But most states require like a like a you know the federal license. So and that and, and we have a partnership with btmcompliance.com and they handle they handle your twenty your your uh, compliance program in accordance with the Bank Secrecy Act. They they handle your MSB license with FinCEN. They get you all registered. So as soon as you order machines from us, we tell them, hey, this is our customer. Get them going, and they start that process. That way, by the time your machines arrive, you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about any compliance on the federal one. Now on the on the state end, that's something that you have to do your own research on. Um, obviously states like New York require a bit license and the chance of anybody really, you know, getting into that market is, you know, not going to happen. But um, other, uh, the other 49 states, you can do it. A couple of those states require some additional licensing. And so you want to do your research before you uh, enter into the business to see if there's any other uh, regulations that you have to attend to. Yeah, I mean, most of these machines are, they use a combination of uh, SMS verification on the phone, government ID, social security numbers, uh, things, of, things of that nature. So again, it depends on the compliance program that comes up with, but in, in essence, they're trying to just track the customer and, and all the transactions they do. 
No, we'll come back to uh, we'll come back to that. I guess. No, I mean, I, I, I'll, the only thing I would say is that most people coming into this aren't aware of compliance, so they definitely need a third party to help them through the process and probably want to keep it. I mean, even banks who have many many years of experience doing this um, use other services to help them, you know, stay up to date and, and keep things going. Okay. Okay. So. Um... Moving on to the next section, uh, how to secure Bitcoin for the operation. So who wants to go first? <laughs> well, you, there, there's a couple of ways to secure Bitcoin. Um, you, you can be one of those lucky fellows that bought punch Bitcoin at $200, and then you've got plenty of Bitcoin laying around, but uh, not too many people are so lucky. So the other way is you want to secure it by uh, buying it from a Bitcoin exchange. Uh, you can uh, also uh, uh, OTC desk offer Bitcoin. Um, you can mine Bitcoin too. So this is a, a you can uh, seek out people that have Bitcoin and are looking for a way to sell it. Uh, but you know, as long as it's all legal, you're good to go. Uh, most people, what they do is they set up exchange accounts, and those exchange accounts, the APIs on those exchanges, tie right into our dashboard software. That way, when somebody comes to buy Bitcoin at the ATM, it's automatically bought back at you know, minus the percentage what you're charging your customer, but the same supply of Bitcoin is bought back on the exchange. All right, moving on. Uh, moving on to uh, how to choose the right location. So where's a good this, place? This to is put a tricky one. Purchase? There is no magic formula for this. So, so what you're looking for is convenience. Um, you know, a, a well secure place. Um, if people ask me, you know, we have them in all sorts of weird places. And some surprisingly do better than others, but I'd, I'd say the traditional place is a bodega that has a traditional ATM machine, gas pumps, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, quick, quick mart type uh, 7-Eleven where people come in and they, they buy some Bitcoin. It's a destination. Those seem to do the best, but we have them in laundromats, gun shops, um, supermarkets, you name it. And some of them do very, very well, but, you know, others in may not do well in, in, in other locations as, 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 as we see, but for the most part, pretty much anywhere you put them, they'll come, as long as it's not somewhere like nobody gets to. So, uh, it's well. The, uh, the 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 big part is the convenience part. So when somebody pulls up to a gas station, they've only got to take X amount of steps to go into the gas station, to the back of the gas station, do their business. Nobody asks them any questions. But like, if you put one in a mall, now you have to park way out in the parking lot, and you got to walk with a couple thousand dollars across the parking lot through the mall. And then you're sitting there feeding into a machine while a bunch of people on their day off with shopping bags are staring at you. Those machines don't seem to do pretty well. But same thing with restaurants. Restaurants don't do very well either. And, and that's because you, know, you kind of feel like you're imposing yourself in front of a bunch of people that are sitting down to eat dinner. And so we've seen that it really does have to. So it's like, like you said, mini markets, uh, bodegas, um, gas stations do great. Uh, I mean, if you, you know, if you do some research, gas stations is where you find most Bitcoin ATMs. They wouldn't all be in all these gas stations unless there was a reason why. And that reason why is because gas stations work, especially on the convenience end. And what about uh, what about hours of operation too uh, on these locations? Do you find that they do better during the day, nighttime? Yeah, the, 20, the, the 24 hour locations seem to do better, even though you don't see a lot of transactions early in the morning, but um, you know, there are quite a few people on their way to work that will stop in. So early morning hours seem to work really well. But uh, again, it's really depending on the location. Like we have a location near a hospital, early morning, it's busy, right? Doctors and nurses, there's a, a, a you know, a swift uh, or, um, you know, the shift is over and they're switching out. And, you know, so we'll see the flux of people. Uh, we have another one where truck drivers stop in and, and they happen late in the evening and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, so while we're still on locations, uh, two questions that came up. One was, um, one had to do with percentage versus uh, a fixed rent, but also what's a simple approach when you find one of these locations and <laughs> go over like what you say? Fix, fixed price is better for you uh, because if they realize how much money is actually going through there, they're going to get a lot more. So a lot of times just getting them into a, a fixed price, four square feet on the floor, for them, it's retail space. How much money am I earning per square foot? You know, whether they have potato chips, they have chocolate bars, whatever they have in there, they're looking to earn more on their retail space. So you're, you're gonna give them a pretty good return. Um, you know, personally, I start at $300 and depending on how, how well the machine does in three to four months, uh, we could bump that up to a higher price. 
but but you can do percentage if you want to. But uh, again, it's probably not in your best interest to do a percentage. It's better just to do a flat fee. Okay. Yeah, and not only is it not in your best interest, but you're the one doing all the work here. All they're providing you with location, internet, and and electricity. You're doing all the work. You're doing your asking how, you're how doing the network gas station. Sorry. Go ahead. You're doing yeah. you're, you're, you're doing the cash logistics. You're it's your, it's your Bitcoin. It's your customer support. You paid for the machine, so fix uh, doing fixed price on a location is really it, that's a, the most fair way of doing things. There's a, you can always come back and renegotiate, you know. But um, given a percentage, just uh, yeah, I mean like it's up, it's up to each individual. Most operators yeah. don't do. Well, and the other, so, so they're asking how to network with gas station owners. When you go in there and you say, listen, I need four square feet on your floor and I'm going to pay you $300 a month. There's nothing in his store that's earning him that kind of money. So for him, he's got a three, you know, 3,000 square foot floor. You're asking for four square feet that are going to make more money than the next 100 square feet combined. It's, it's not a hard sell. Um, so, you know, most people I tell them, just go in there and talk to them. Um, there are services that we, we have and we could recommend where, They'll cold call for you and just find locations in a, in a geographical area that you've targeted and find new locations and you'll pay them a finder's fee for it. You can do that as well. But I, I think it's a good experience to go in there and understand what retailers are looking for. Yep. So let's yeah. move on to, uh, to the last section uh, to how to handle cash and turn it into Bitcoin because there's a decent amount of questions that are coming in about this. So this will tie in perfectly. Right. And, so, and I see some, some of the questions were about banking and things like that. So yeah, so this is perfect for uh, for this part. Yeah, there's a, there's a number of ways to handle the cash. Uh, there's obviously the what I'll call the traditional way, which is through a bank, through an armored car service. The armored car service comes and custodies your your cash, brings it to the vault, deposits in the account, goes to an exchange. Um, there's other services out there that will will provide sort of middleman banking services, uh, things like that. There's also where you're picking up the cash yourself and you're depositing it into whatever banking relationships that you have with, with your bank. Those, those are sort of the mainstream uh, ways to do it. There's also partnerships with other companies that need cash. Um, there, there's check cashing businesses and things like that that need cash that you can partner with. Um, Bitcoin miners, things like that that want cash for Bitcoin. So there's, there's lots of different ways to do it. Okay. Um... Some of the questions are, uh, so one question was, will banks allow depositing of ATM revenues? It's not the Bitcoin ATM revenues that they don't like. They don't like cash in general. So uh, okay. anytime you go over $10,000, they got to file a CTR, but any, any cash transactions at all, they're going to scrutinize heavily. So you can't just go in there and start depositing cash. You're going to have to talk to the bank about what it is that you're going to do. So they have an expectation. Most of them don't want to take large volumes of cash in the banking retail outlet. They have vaults. So if you're going to deal, be dealing with a lot of cash, they'll set you up with armored car service. The armored car service will pick up the cash and it never hits the bank. They really, it's, it has nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's not Bitcoin they're afraid of, it's cash. Right. And so, you know, there's a lot of banks that just don't do that business altogether. Most of the larger ones don't do it. Uh, but there are some regional, smaller banks who are, who are willing to work with you on that. Okay. And the banks want to see it, and the banks want to see a compliance program. That definitely helps, right? Yeah, I know. So, everybody always asks, like, oh, so I, I you know, I, I went and talked to the bank, and I was like, well, right. did you go and talk to the car dealer before you got your driver's license? You don't even have like they, they're asking about compliance, and you're like, oh, I don't have a compliance officer yet, and I'm, I don't have, yeah, don't don't do that because you're right. you're shutting your door before you even get started. There, you, you definitely need to have your compliance game in in um, in effect. And yeah, because we get these questions a lot where people, you know, certainly want to cover all their bases up front. And that makes sense, you know, if you, you know, before you jump completely in the pool, I get it. But sometimes the approach is they'll walk into a bank and say, I'm starting a Bitcoin business. And the bank goes, whoa. And the reality <laughs> is, is what you, what they're really, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what they really are is they're, they're cash, they're servicing cash. These are money service businesses that. Yeah, there's different types of account. Most of the people you're right. going to talk to just walking into a bank are not going to understand that. So they may open the wrong type of account and then you're just going to go down the wrong path anyway. Um, you know, there, there's ways to work around that. Um, there's, there's companies that can help you through those processes, but sure. at the end of the day, yeah, it, bank banking is a, is a tough challenge. Okay. Um, so, so Shay's asking about how much for, yeah. So that's, that's my number. I usually start with $300 for four square feet on the floor. And then from there, I, you know, look at it in a couple of months and we might go to 
500 to 700 to 1,000, depending on the, you know, depending on the volume that the machine's doing. Okay. So we've gone through the steps. Uh, we still have questions here in the chat, um, but just to just to cover, we've gone over how to choose the right ATM, cover compliance, how to secure Bitcoin for your operation. I think somebody right was also asking about marketing, and, and and that's another big aspect of this. There's there's two really there's sure. three main things here. One is cash management, getting rid of the cash, turning it back into Bitcoin. Customer service. A lot of your customers, new new users, you're going to get phone calls. You know, help them through it. And they will come back and be lifelong customers. They keep coming back. Um, and then the the third one is the uh, is the marketing, right? Getting it out there, letting people right. know here's where the machine is. There's services that you can list on. There's just brick and mortar, you know, banners outside. Like here's you can buy Bitcoin here. Those those are the effective type things that we found um, on these things. You, you you want to do some digital marketing as well. I mean, people want to you know Google, hey, how do I buy Bitcoin and you want your 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 machine to show up at the very top, but um, in general, you know, brick and mortar stuff. And can we talk about some of the marketing features that you can do on the machine? Um, so, Coin ATM Radar. Half our operators don't use it, and they do fine. But those that do use it do a lot better. It's a free marketing service. You just take a picture of your ATM, you put your location, your contact information, a picture of the location. And then, you know, after a couple of months, you start getting customers straight off Coin ATM radar. It's a free service. So why not do it? It's free marketing. And like Eric said, online marketing, uh, doing geofencing. But that also requires that you have to contact a, uh, a marketing firm of some sort because you're not just going to be able to, uh, you know, get in with Google on your own. You have to use a marketing firm. And then outdoor advertising. And outdoor advertising is actually a great way to negotiate, uh, you know, rent at your locations. So, you know, like you offer a couple hundred bucks a month for four square feet of space. You can throw a little extra in there to get a big sign out front that says, you know, buy Bitcoin here, buy and sell Bitcoin. And that catches people's eyes. Okay. They asked another question. Uh, where do you start with when, when researching the state level uh, money service businesses? So that's that's a good question. It's a little tough, right? Um, the the knee jerk reaction is you got to talk to an attorney, right? Because the attorney is the one that's going to give you the opinion on that. However, if you look at the banking commission on most states, they've come out with an opinion. Most have have said Bitcoin ATMs are like uh, vending machines, and they don't they don't require a money transmitter license. And so most have said that's fine. Um, some of, we, we call it the Texas guidance because Texas put it out and basically everybody just copy and pasted what they put out and said, yeah, what they said. Um, so, so most states, if you look at your banking commission, may do that. The second thing that you can do, again, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to give you legal advice, is but you can look at the statute itself. And some of them are very specific on what it is that they govern. Most states will actually say government-backed currency, which means they have no jurisdiction over cryptocurrency. It's not a government-backed currency. Um, but this, but this is really a question that your attorney would have to answer for you. So, so where would you start with your local attorney? Say, hey, listen, I'm looking to do this business. Look around other ATM operators. Look to other things that have been written about it. Um, but check with the banking commission in, in this in the state. A question here it says, can you put one at at a bank? Like, could you <laughs> could you put a BTM at a bank? Yeah, if you know if you know a bank that'll let us put one of our machines in, we're we're we're, we're looking for one. <laughs> okay. Um, here's a question that just came in: uh, Which exchanges are good to use? It, it depends where you're operating, right? If you're in the United States, you want to use one of the regulated exchanges here, like Gemini, um, Binance, FTX, Kraken, one of those. Um, those those work well, but. You can use whatever exchange you want. At, at the end of the day, it's about getting the cash out of the machine and quickly to an exchange. So whatever exchange is going to help you facilitate that, usually it's more related to the, the exchanges and the banking relationships they have. Decentralized doesn't have performance good enough to, to really uh, to do it for you. But you, you could, you could in theory, buy back your coins and then later, but yeah, we don't have that now. <laughs> Not for today. Got it. Uh, another question that just came in is how much approximate time does it take uh, to process uh, for the process and the end setup? About 35 days. Yep. Yeah, if you don't have them in stock to get them made and sent, it's, it's about 35 days. If they're in stock, ready to go, you know, they can go out next week. 
The actual install process though, once it gets there is literally you plug it into the internet, you plug it into the power um, and within 15 minutes, everything's up and running and you know, it's ready to go. And, and so for the time that, the, that your order's placed and so the time that it does show up, you have that time to get on ramp sort of software, go through all the BTM compliance so that when they do show up, you're ready to just plug and play. Yeah, correct? but by the, time, by the time your machine shows up, these other things that you need to do are, are in place. Um, are there giveaways? There's giveaways on the machines. You can actually create coupons on the machines where you give away Bitcoin. Uh, if, we, if we have machines where you are, I, I'd give you a coupon and hold it up and you can take it to the machine and get $5 worth of Bitcoin or, or money off of your Bitcoin. If you use it and do it and, and do something with it, well, let, let us know. We'd, we'd love to like do a case study on, on what you did with the giving away Bitcoin. We gave them away on the radio. You can actually, you can have more success, uh, success doing that if you target a local Bitcoin meetup group because the people already have Bitcoin and they'll take $5 worth of free Bitcoin. And then they actually get to use a Bitcoin ATM. A lot of them might not have used one. And once they actually use our software, they realize, wow, I can buy Bitcoin in under 30 seconds. It's pretty cool. Now, now, now a little bit of background. Uh, Eric is the CEO of Chainbytes, but he also operates his own Bitcoin ATM business. Right. So he's not selling machines. He understands this business inside out. question that just came in it says how do i track people to my machines do i list them on some kind of a map or google well keith mentioned earlier is a website called coin atm radar which essentially is the google maps of btms and yeah you want to get listed on them it's free to list on there you take a pic keith was saying you take a picture of your machine you know stand there in front of your machine and smile and uh, <laughs> hold up a dollar bill or something like just make it look like you know people are there and using it and, and want to feel comfortable and Give it time. You can also use meetup groups and, and things where you show people how to use it. A lot, a lot of this barrier is just education and showing people how to use it and, and them feeling comfortable. Um, and, and this leads into the other question, which is with so many platforms available, why would somebody use one of these machines with su such high fees? Um, I, I can tell you right now, just take one of your family members and say, hey, go sign up at one of the exchanges and watch them. And that will tell you why they, 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 they do everything at the machine they don't have to do like take their photo, send an email it to themselves, upload it to the website, all this nonsense that they got to do to get it set up on an exchange. They don't have to do that on the machine. They can literally do everything there. Click, click, click. It steps them through the wizard and believe me, they're not going anywhere else. That, that, that's it. They, they go to Gemini or they go to Coinbase and they're like, screw this. Like this is, and then, uh, and then what my bank account information too? No. And so just do your own sort of experiment with people and let them do it. Yeah, I mean, the main demographic at Bitcoin ATMs is the older generation, people that are not tech literate, uh, the 20 million unbanked Americans, the many people that have banking, but they've never used like their banking to its full potential. So they've never done a bank wire. And then you're sitting there telling them, hey, you got to do a bank wire to this exchange. You have to set up an exchange account. And you have to know how to set up stop losses. And they're lost. They're not even, they're, they'll never buy Bitcoin. I have family members that I've been telling for years, just, just set up an exchange account. They never do. Why? Because it's just too much work. It's, to, it's too much, too, it's complicated for them. Whereas the Bitcoin ATM, they can just go get Bitcoin. It's pretty simple. Right. Uh, some of the questions that came in, uh, there's two questions that were almost the same. One, uh, are, are our machines also traditional ATM machines and two, are there any plans to have any card readers or uh, on our machines at all? And then the answers are, you know, our, our machines are cash on ramps, on ramp, on ramp. Yeah, we, we did put card readers in the machines at one point, but we don't have banks that are willing to to back it. And and because Bitcoin is, you know, irreversible, um, you know, the, the credit cards are not, there's a, also fraud. So really the machines, if, if you want to use, if you want to use your credit card or something, there's ways to do that online. You don't need to visit a, a cash machine. Cash machine is literally for, for uh, bringing cash. Right. Um, uh, now another question. This is uh, this is a neat question. It says, "How would you track your profits using your software?" And the answer is yes. I mean, you know, just let tell you alone. I mean, you could see how many bills are in each machine, which you know, each transaction, oh, when, when, and where I'll, was bought. I'll share, I'll share my screen. Yeah. So here, yeah. here's a monthly report that you would take, and here's your gross revenue, cost of goods, meaning what you bought back your Bitcoin, Bitcoin fees and then your net revenue. Um, you can look across your machines and see how each one did and, and how much you netted on each one and what the gross revenue was. You can look at your orders and you can see them as they're coming in real time, how much you made off each one. There's a performance report here that'll show you 
in the last 24 hours what you did in the last seven days, whether that's up or down, which machine, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there's there's quite a bit of information here. This is this is the dashboard that you have that shows you sort of you know how much cash is in your machine, what uh, and everything else. Really neat. Um, another question that just came out. Oh, so this has come up a few times in a few different ways. What coins does, uh, which different types of coins do our machine support? And can we spend a few minutes on altcoins? So, so they, they mostly do Bitcoin. Most, most of the serious operators only do Bitcoin. And, and most of the people that want to get into these altcoins will get Bitcoin and swap into them. Um, we do have Litecoin and Dogecoin. And I think we have a couple of other coins that BitGo uh, releases on there. I don't know anybody that's actually operating them, um, but they are available. Um, but I would just suggest to you, if you're getting started, start with Bitcoin, wait a few months, and then see if you want to put an altcoin on there. If you find a location where there's a hacker dojo or something for Ethereum, great. Maybe maybe that's the case. But for the most part, you're going to do this stuff and turn it off later. Okay. Uh, another another question. Uh, what does a warranty for the machines look like, and how do repairs work? So most of the, most of the parts of the machine are factory uh, warranties. Uh, from the computer to the recycler and things like that. I, I don't know. And how long is the warranty? It's a, it's a one. It's a one. It's a one-year uh, uh, warranty on the hardware. Yeah, there's a, there, there's some hardware in there. I think it was even longer than that. The, the, yes. But for the most part, yeah. that's about right. Yeah, yeah. So, so some of the hardware has man, uh, additional manufacturer warranties that you know last longer. Uh, another question that came in was, how often does the system update? What does it look like? Does it go offline? Oh, and also the insurance question, which I'll, which I'll answer. Um, yeah. So when we update our software, most of the update happens on the back end. Uh, you won't even notice it happening. Um, if the machine itself needs to be updated, it'll just go black for a minute and the update will happen. Shouldn't take longer than five minutes. They'll typically do it when there's no customer in front of the machine. They can look through there and see, hey, no customer quick, make the update and you won't even know that it happened. Um, so we just do that automatically. You, you won't even know the difference. Um, the insurance is a little tricky um, simply because there's some, some insurance companies that, that don't know how to underwrite it. And so they'll just treat it as traditional ATMs and charge you for that. It's really relatively cheap. Um, your, li your general liability insurance will cover some of this stuff. Um, again, you talk to, a real, talk to an insurance agent who has an underwriter and they'll be able to find you somebody. If you just go to one of the big ones like State Farm, they'll be like, oh, we don't do cryptocurrency. But I'm not a cryptocurrency. Yeah, that's not what I'm trying to do. They just, you know, they don't really work with you. So, so try to do one that has a, uh, an actual, uh, what do they call them, actuaries? What are the insurance guys got called? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what was the next one? Um, no, no, the text will come out to repair. Um, depending on what it is, we'll, we'll walk you through the process of removing it and shipping it. Um, most, most of the time, you just replace whatever part that it is. I mean, if you really need something, they're just generic computer stuff. You can get like the Geek Squad and things like that to come out for people that are truly not technical and don't want to touch anything or are uncomfortable doing it. You can pay to have like a, uh, uh, a squad come out, but it's it's literally just like, we're just going to take a piece out and replace it. It's all modular stuff. So um, the only thing that's really moving is the recycler. And so after, you know, a million dollars, $2 million through the machine that the recycler could need refurbished or something, so. Okay. Yeah. To, um, so, so the, um, the, the yeah. So the the ITL recyclers come from the UK. Uh, the K uh, is it the K ninety uh, printer comes from Italy. Uh, most of the rest of the hardware comes from the United States. The software is developed here in Allentown, and the box themselves are made in China. They go through a third party inspection process. So once everything's been assembled, it doesn't come, it doesn't come with like our you know it's not like ready to go at all. Uh, but like the hardware is assembled inside, uh, goes through a th third party inspection process. If it doesn't uh, reach our quality level that, that we want for our customers, we reject that ATM and this happens. All right. So if it's not uh, the highest quality of hardware and the production of the actual box itself, we, we, will, we won't take that for our customers. So um, then it gets shipped out to you from there. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, tech, tech support is available for international. I think how, how many languages do we have in customer service? Spanish, English, Russian, Serbian. We just added, uh, yeah, Klingon. 
<laughs> and a bunch of other ones too. Yeah. yeah the, so. We we have a lot. Uh, challenge us. Challenge us on our languages for for our customer service. Yeah, we've we've got a lot of them. Klingon. Yeah. Who knows Klingon? <laughs> yeah. Somebody does Portuguese. We got it all. Yep. Uh, yeah, customers can sell their cash there, so they are two-way machines. It's, it's called a recycler, so the money that goes into the machine can actually be recycled and spit out to the next customer, uh, reducing your time to to the machine there. So, yeah, they are they are all two-way machines for, for that. Okay. Um, a website recommended for marketing. It's not one website. Like um, I can't tell you how to just general marketing. Um, basically, you just want to get the word out there that the machine's there and people will come, and right. it's not like I'm, I'm just i tell people it's traditional stuff like literally it's signs outside saying bitcoin atm here work a lot better than any kind of other marketing that you're going to do including coin atm radar people driving by and seeing it knowing that it's there hearing about it like hey i know where to go buy it and then they stop by these other things these digital marketing things you should definitely do them because definitely missing out on traffic there but um okay the question uh average net profit for a two-way machine again it depends on you i mean i'll, I'll show you i'll show you uh, I share this stuff for you. so the average on the two-way machine so this is this is just the beginning of this month so let's go back to september august let's so this machine netted thirteen thousand dollars this one netted eleven thousand dollars this one netted 10 grand. So it did 76,000, 83,000, and it netted this amount in profit off those machines. So most of these machines, these are relatively new once you start getting down here. Uh, that one's brand new. That one's brand new. So you know, one like this, you know, did $30,000 in the month and met $4,200 in profit. So if you want to see just like a general, we didn't do anything with it, we just put it in. There's one. Um, but these ones up here are obviously ones we've marketed well. Once we, we have existing customers that come back all the time, they use the machine literally weekly. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's actually, we usually see higher revenues than that. So there we go. 142,000, this was in July. So that one netted, just that one machine netted 20,000 for that month. So. But that's how you you know you run your business your way. You you market it and provide good customer service. Those are the two key things. Do the machines need a physical cable for internet or utilize Wi-Fi? Um, they can do cellular Wi-Fi or an Ethernet cable. So uh, we use OpConnect on a lot of our our more remote locations where we have internet problems. But you can just use the Wi-Fi if if you if you want. But if you start having network issues and the machines going down. Um, Typically, if, if the if the store has their Wi-Fi and stuff hooked into the cash register, it's not going to go down for periods of time. You're probably okay. But again, if you do, you just get the cellular and put it on there. But you can go through Wi-Fi or, or Ethernet. Okay. Uh, another question that came in, it's, uh, can I put a commercial for my other business on my top screen? Yep. You can put whatever you want on there. But you won't want to. Yeah. Now most people, most people just use what explainers, advertisements for you know. Yeah, because I mean, they could advertise the potato chips, but for the same reason that it's making more than the potato chips, they're going to want to advertise the machine. So. Oh, this is a this is a good one. Someone offered me a free location, but I'm hesitant to take it. Is there any downside? Do they want me to warm up location? Uh, my location. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. I. One of our sales guys had a custom, had a customer who took a free location, and it did not work out too well. Um, but it was because he he thought, hey, this is a free location; it's going to be a great location. Um, no, it, just because it's a free location does not mean it's going to be a good location. Uh, it's better to pay for a good location than it is to take a free location. So if it's a free location and it's a good location, yeah, go for it. But um, do your, you know, do your due diligence and make sure that it is a good location. Considering the amount of money that it costs to do, you know, buy machines and go through the process and just the time that you spend daily, you know, getting ready. You know, and you, you know, Eric's number, he said earlier on, the, uh, for anybody that joined a little bit later, he said he pays $300 a month. Some operators pay a little bit more, some operators pay a little bit less. But I mean, for a few hundred hours over the course of a few months, 
you know, you get what you pay for. So if you're taking a free it's location, worth, it's worth the risk. Like, you know, you, you put it in there, you see how the location is going to do. Some of them take off right away. Some of them right away, you know, this is going to work out, be fantastic. Some of them take a couple of months and, and they build up over time. Rarely do we go, this location sucks. We're just going to pull the machine out of there. I mean, you go down there. I can't remember the last time we just pulled out of a location, like just did nothing. It, it just doesn't happen. But some of them just don't perform as well as others. That's all. Yeah, wasn't it a gun store? It was. Yeah. Yep. And so so here's a here's a good point. He has uh he has one gun store that was doing extremely well and thought that, hey, why wouldn't another gun store do well? And it just didn't. because the other one does more more other business, and this was strictly guns, and people would come in one at a time, buy their guns, and it, it just wasn't just didn't work. But yeah, that was that's the last one I can remember that we actually pulled a machine or like, yeah, it's not working. And I will also say this, uh, just on a personal note, if that person really wants to give you something for free and absolutely does never, never wants anything in return, once you start making a lot of money, uh, you find yourself a great person. But most people are probably going to want something. You you want to pay them and you want to incentivize them anyway, because they're going to get questions from customers. And and like our best locations, the, the employees at the locations help people with the machines. Like we have brochures and stuff. Like we hand these out at the machine and stuff. But if you have the cost, the operators, like the customers, the the employees at the store themselves that know how to do this stuff, that's an immense app set. So when people run into trouble, they're like, hey, let me show you how you do this, and they help them. They don't call your customer service; they're getting help right there, and and we see that happen too. So, sure, you can have a Bitcoin ATM inside a dispensary, but the problem there is your, your double-edged sword. Um, the uh, the uh, the banking issue, right? Because now you're dealing with marijuana and cryptocurrency. Yeah, it's more of a banking issue. There's no law says right. you can't put one in there, but uh, yeah, we we have some in dispensaries, I know, but I don't, I don't. They, they don't do any better or worse than anywhere else. But I think they bring the wrong kind of uh, possible repercussions. Okay. Um, do you need crypto to purchase uh, and in, and install an ATM? And um, what kind of volume yep. discount do you offer? So yeah, yeah. Let's start with the first one. You need to put something in your machine. Yeah, you, you buy initial Bitcoin that you stock in your hot wallet, and then you're you're just kind of recycling that through. So you want as much money uh, in available to you as it takes to run for about a week, or how long it takes for your machine to fill up. You empty it and turn it around back into Bitcoin. So some some people takes a week, some people two weeks, some people two days. It's going to depend on how how you run your operations, how much money you'll need there. Okay. So yeah, we we do offer veteran discount. Five percent discount. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's another? So which, which hot wallet? Um, so so there's a wallet that's provided to you um, as part of the software, and it's just literally just going to raw create your transaction. So it's not really like a hosted wallet. Uh, Block.io and BitGo are hosted wallets that you can pay for and you can use them. The difference really is those have SegWit, so your your fees will be a little less than if you just use the generic wallet that we have included with that. Um, I use both. And you can use three or four wallets if you want. Like you can use as many wallets if you want. Okay. Yeah, in theory, you could sell stable coins, and, and we've, we've looked at doing some of that stuff with DeFi and things like that. Um, I think you want to be careful if you're in the United States dealing with anything with a stable coin at this point. They've kind of given us notice. Um, okay. And what's another one? Hidden costs. We charge 1% of the fees on the chain rates machines. That's it. That's your cost. Yeah. And it's not hidden. It's up front. Yeah. We tell you. So there's nothing hidden. Unless you really want to pay us something extra, but no, no, yes. That's it. Can machines collect data like S, uh, social security number and KYC or only ID and SMS? You can do all of those things. Um, it, 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 so you set all up your above. KYC program. So you can say like, uh, we do 10, over $10,000 reduced social security numbers. Um, if you have the travel rule, if you have some other places where you're going to require to do it at a lesser amount, you can do it there. So yeah. It, it yeah, it's actually uh, one of the good selling points of our uh, software is it targets, it targets larger customers because they, they can put in over $10,000 and 
you don't have to call them and ask them for their social security number. They can take it right. Yeah, there. we still call them. Anything over 10,000, we usually give them a call. But again, that's up to the operator. But yeah, we don't have to collect that information. We we should have all the information we need. But uh, anything over 10,000, uh, just on, on a personal business, uh, you know, operation side, we do typically call those customers. Okay. Here's a great question. Uh, what's the return on investment on one machine to start off based on a great location? Well, it depends. I mean, um, you know, like that location did 160,000 at 17%. So there you go. So that one did really well. So what's the return on investment on uh, a machine that's a bad placement uh, location. Like if you leave it in your basement, well, obviously it's not going to be very well. Zero. No, so, um, <laughs> yeah, that one's going to be zero. Uh, how do I access the managing platform Eric showed? Well, you have to be Eric and you can't see yeah, Eric's no, platform. You have your own, every, everyone has their own dashboard there. It's a web-based browser based. So you can just access it from, from anything, um, Mac or PC. Um, and that runs all of your machines. Yeah, it runs everything. So you can see everything about your dashboard, everything about your orders, everything about uh, your compliance, everything about it, about anything that you want, your performance, how how it's running. Um, we okay. just we just integrated a new service where we're using Zap, so you can hook this into your QuickBooks, Slack, Discord, any any other products that you want. You can hook all these 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 things into it if you want. Okay. No, they don't consume much electricity, just like a normal computer. We did put a meter on one, just to kind of see, and it's it's just like a normal desktop computer, so it doesn't consume much electricity now. We're not mining Bitcoin behind the scenes. We're not hiding some miners in there sucking up all the electricity. Right. <laughs> Although people have asked us about that. <laughs> uh, what's the lead time for an order of five machines? So typically, like worst case scenario, you're looking at 35 days. And you know, if we do have them in stock, we can get them out in seven to 10 days. OK. Um, yeah, what is the so, so there's a bunch of guides on the website inside the the dashboard itself there's a help system so you can just kind of put a help system uh, you know, question in there and it'll take you to an article or a video or, or something that we've written about that almost every item inside the dashboard has like a question mark next to it where you can read like this is what it is and some of them have further information where it can take takes you into there if you don't understand something and you ask support I promise you whatever you just ask them will show up in the system like a week later because you know they've they've been through it so most of that stuff is included in the dashboard and the help system inside the dashboard but anything you can chat directly with one of the, the guys and say hey this doesn't make any sense how's this set up and they, they'll help you with that okay um, and there's live support right okay. we do have some machines we do have some machines in stock but it is first come first serve so okay. that's how that works <laughs> um Insurance will, will if, there, if you have theft, your liability insurance uh, will cover that. Um, what, what people do, so there's different parts though, right? The custody of the, the cash. So they insure the cash separately. And then also when the garment car service and they take custody, it's under their insurance. So um, it's, uh, it's just normal insurance. So there's, it's just liability insurance. You just have to work with them to make sure they understand your business and everything's covered there. But if you had a loss, liability insurance will cover okay i here's one that's a, this I, just the way this question's worded just sounds like this person's like eager to and taking this as a challenge it says so you've never had a bank buy a bitcoin atm <laughs> they're like um, all right i want to be i want to go we, do it. we have but they never deployed it <laughs> sorry bud you're not the first so but if... the, the, you know um i would love uh, the first bank that actually deploys a bitcoin atm will, will make some uh, noise. I mean, the, the, yeah. So we'll see. All right. Love to talk to you about it. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. Be interesting. Don't hold your, don't uh, hold great your info. Thank don't you. Hold your right, on yeah. This one says great info. Thank you. That's not really a question. That's just a compliment. But you know what? We got to take those too. Um, what else do we have in here? What are the prices of your ATMs? That's oh. another question. So the prices of our ATMs. So, so we've got uh, with the, the universal model, okay? It's the one screen, two way. And that, that's our base model. It starts at $6,500. Now, if you wanna get the additional screen on top, that would be $6,800. If you wanna get S and G locks installed at the factory, that'd be an additional $340. Um, and I can't give you the price of our newest model yet because I don't really have that. 6,800 maybe. 
Yeah, 6800. She just didn't put it up on the site yet. Yeah. Oh, all right, yeah, that is 6800. Um, so, and that, yeah, that's the prices of those machines. So, either, either way, um, if you wanted to get a discount, we do have certain discounts. For instance, if you're getting into the Bitcoin ATM business, uh, BTM Compliance does that, that uh, written compliance program and gets you your license for a flat fee, a one-time flat fee of $2,000. We will pick that $2,000 up and pay for it for you so it's free if you buy five or more machines. If you buy 12 or more machines, there's an 8% discount on machines. If you buy 30 or more machines, there's a 10% discount. If you pay in Bitcoin, which is, you know, since you're starting a Bitcoin ATM business, and you're going to be doing large transactions with your customers using Bitcoin. We like people to be accustomed with using Bitcoin and we prefer you uh, make payments with Bitcoin. There's a 2% discount. That 2% discount can be applied to all the other discounts we buy. So there you go. Good timing. I was just, I was just finishing up and with questions. <laughs> all right. So, yes, we pay a reduced fight. Uh, if you pay in Bitcoin, we pay, we give a, um, a uh, deduction. Yep. And another one that's coming in. Before we get to that one, how much volume do I need to start an ATM business? How much in Bitcoin or cash? Or both? <laughs> More is better, but again, it really depends on, on where you're going to deploy it and what kind of volume you're going to see there. Somebody can come and drop 10 grand in your machine, so you're going to want at least 10 grand laying around um, for that. So, you know, more is better, but uh, it, realistically, it's going to take you a few months for it to ramp up. And in that time, you'll have already generated cash, but you never know. Like we've had locations put them in and first night, 10 grand, boom. And I'm like, oh crap. But it's so honestly, starting with one machine is harder than multiple machines because multiple machines share one hot wallet. So you put all your money in one place and distribute it across all your machines. It's a lot easier than trying to plan out that one machine and you know you might run out of Bitcoin and things like that. But you know, less volume. Yeah. And usually so the first two months are usually pretty slow. So every now and then, yeah, like Eric said, it's a surprise and you know you, you see it, it depends. Like, oh. like we've we've had some weird locations that just took off from day one and then we've had other ones that nothing for three four months and then all of a sudden poof, took off and you know we, we, we don't have a it just but if it, it's a it takes snowball a longer, thing. so it's one of those things where you can actually grow into figuring out exactly how much liquidity you need but how much bitcoin you need and how much dollars you need because you don't actually put dollars into the machine every time you go to your machine you empty all the dollars out of your machine and you're trying to get those dollars back into bitcoin so you're trying to get them back on your exchange because even though they're buy and sell Bitcoin ATMs, it's going to be 90 to 99 percent people buying Bitcoin. And so, yeah, at ten, fifteen thousand dollars, that's a great starting point. But you can you can actually start with that with five machines, and that can it, that can get you started. But you're going to grow into having higher volume. But you don't want too much, you know, to deal with at the same time. So you kind of get a feel for it. You grow into it. All right. Uh, all right. We can go down this road. Um, how do you differentiate uh, with your competitors? Well, we're here talking to you right now, but that's one differentiator. You're not going to see them talking to anybody or, you know, or, or pretty much anything. You're not going to hear from them. Even if you go to order machines, you're not going to hear from them. If you have problems, you're not going to hear from them. Um, I think that's one of the things that we're providing is, is the ability for people to get their hands held and walk through the process of the business that they've never had to do before. Um, no, nobody's done this. So, um, you know, we help with that. We make sure that the machines are up and running. We basically support operators become successful. And so it's not just a matter of selling machines and good luck to you. Um, it's selling machines and then supporting it afterwards. So I think that's probably one of our, our big differentiators. The software is by far the best software out there. The compliance is the best out there. Our hardware, premium hardware. Um, it one works. Of the we choose premium hardware is because we want your machine to remain operational. Uh, we, you can't afford to have downtime, but that plugs right into the software. Same thing, can't have your software going down because your software and your hardware have to be compatible, right? Yeah. 
Hardware meaning the physical machine itself. Yeah. Um, and, and Robbie, yeah, one, one of the issues is your cash management, right? You got to get that figured out of what to do with the cash and get it turned back into Bitcoin. That is definitely one of the early challenges um, that you that you have to solve, especially in the United States. Can you name from my research hardware software? Um, so we have an Intel motherboard. Like, what, what do you want to know? What Everything that's in there? Let's just assume that's what he wants. He didn't say anything more. Yeah. Some other board with, uh, you know, uh, what do we have on there? I threes or I fives on there? He said, "No, not all that." Oh, what do you want to know? About? All right, well, <laughs> phrase your question, <laughs> sir, and ask us. Take a deep breath, count to ten, and then, uh, and then figure out your question and let us know. What's your company's annual revenue and how long have you been in business? What kind of questions? Are, no, these are great questions, actually. <laughs> hey, can they, oh, these are, see, if you were to ask me this person, I'd be like, you know, but no. Can, can you send Bitcoin from the ATM to another address? Yeah, whatever address is scanned at the machine. So um, depending on your jurisdiction and, and the legality of it, people can scan wallets of other people. Uh, they have done that. Um, you know, it doesn't make any difference. Bitcoin doesn't care. Gotcha. Um, but from a legal standpoint, sure, most times in the United States, they don't want that to happen. They want to know who the person is. Okay. Uh, as far as how long we've been around, since 2016, 2017. Yeah. And what did you do? You were at the, you were at the software a long time ago. So yeah, I've been doing this for quite a while. Yeah, I've been building Bitcoin ATMs for probably the last decade now. Um, and the maintenance of the machines. Ma maintenance of the machines is mostly like a Tesla. Like you just update the software, the hardware just keeps going. Um, we, we don't really upgrade the hardware. We just recently replace what's called the NV200 with the Spectral, which is like the next generation. But all those old machines that have the other one will work just fine. All right, here's a great question. This one keeps coming up. How do I order a Bitcoin ATM machine? That's a fantastic <laughs> question. Because now you're taking your- You're taking you, your you talk to Mike and Keith. <laughs> well, you just speak yeah. Or Ramsey. Um, yep, uh, contact us. You can contact us through the website and give us a call. Um, we can explain to you, you know, if are there any other questions that you might have, because I'm sure you do have some questions. Um, from there, we would take some basic information from you, so then we can send you a quote. Once we send you that quote, the instructions for a bank wire and uh, paying in Bitcoin, which we prefer, are in that quote. And, you know, once we receive payment, I mean, like you ordered, a, you ordered your machine, the process begins immediately. Uh, we start onboarding you as a customer and we reach out to btmcompliance.com. They onboard you as a customer and they get you, you your compliance going, which, you know, takes about, you know, a week or two to get that really, you know, going. And that way, by the time your machine arrives, you're ready to rock and roll and you can start operating your Bitcoin ATM business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the, uh, get in touch with us, reach out, you know, we're, we want you up and running, but we don't want you just out there running with no shoes on and no water, and nowhere to stop. We want to teach you how to stretch and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I mean that. Yes, how how do we differentiate? It, the support's great. You know, when Eric just kind of shrugged and said, "We're here," it, it's <laughs> what we're here for. So um, okay. again, don't forget. Dav, Dav, um, Davian asked another question about the AML policy. So you need sure. one AML policy covers all your machines. So you just need one. That covers all your machines. You have a you have a monthly cost per machine that, that goes on um, for them to review it, which is 150 a month per machine. Uh, but that initial program covers everything uh, that you need. The brand of bill acceptor is a ITL. Um, it's a British company, so it's an NV200 smart smart payout uh, bill acceptor spectral is what we're using in there currently. Yeah, it doesn't reject bills. Like, I mean, like it'll reject them if they're a counterfeit, but like it takes bills. It's a, it's a high quality. You don't, you don't want people sitting there trying to put money in and you're, you're you know. Yeah, it has its issues with, with, saying, I don't with want weird, it. we have some weird $50 bills that every now and then they, they, they put a $50 bill out that looks different. And sometimes it chokes on those. And we've seen some of that, but it's, it's rejecting it. We've never had a counterfeit bill make it through there. So it's just rejecting things and being too picular. Um, we've used MEI, we've used some of the other bill acceptors, and this is by far the best one, but really, like, it's not even, not even the same ballpark. Okay. Um, Eric, you covered the, uh, that last question that came in, said if you purchase five machines, we pick up to 2 k for compliance, right? And the question was, is, is it cover, does that license cover all five machines? The license is covering your business. 
you know, the license covers machines. your business regardless of how many machines. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll charge you per machine to do reviewing of all your transactions on those machines. But yeah. Um, but yeah, your license is. Yeah. So your your compliance program and your license, it, you, whether you're buying, you know, five machines or 500 machines, you have to have that done. And that's what that is. So if you get five or more machines, you get that for free. Okay. We pick right. that up. But there is a continuing compliance. So like BTM compliance, they have to, uh, they use blockchain forensic software. They monitor the transactions on your machine. Um, if there's flags in the system, they clear the flags. They file uh, suspicious activity reports. If somebody's trying to send, you know, Bitcoin to a dark wallet in Russia or something, they file a suspicious activity report. When you got customers that are buying uh, um, over $10,000 worth of Bitcoin, it, they file the currency transaction reports. They file all those reports. They retain all that data. Uh, that data ties right into our dashboard software. It's one of the reasons they give such affordable rates to our customers is because they like using our software. It makes their job easier. Um, our software is really geared for a compliance team to sit there and, and use. And so they, they charge $150 a month per machine to be your compliance officer because part of your compliance program requires that you have a compliance officer that works for your company. So in order, you, you know, you, you need to have a compliance officer, they'll do that for 150 a month per machine. Now that does scale out. Once you buy over 11 machines, it, or like 11 to 29 machines, it's a it's a thousand dollars a month. And so it drops, you know, as you scale out going up up the ladder. The more machines you get, the more compliant, the cheaper compliance becomes. Okay. So uh, Joseph's question, he's a registered MSB and banks have shut you down. Yeah, well, <laughs> welcome welcome to the United States. Uh, that's what happens. You, re you register with Vincent, nobody wants to do business with you. Um, it is a challenge, right? So what you'll find is most of the bigger banks probably won't want to do business with you. Depending on the state that you're in, most of the big banks won't want to do business with you. So you can either you know, reach out to the, um, the credit unions, the small regional uh, state, state run banks typically are, are easier to deal with um, and just talk to them. Right, and some of them are willing to take the the risk, and some of them are going to tell you, you know, we just don't do any MSBs. Most most of the big, you know, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, they're not going to touch you. Yeah. That, that is that is certainly a challenge. Just do what you got to do to get it get to, to get it through until you until you get good banking relationships. It takes a while. It's tough. Okay. All right. Well, I think that uh, that about covers everything. Um... No concerns about the U.S. banning Bitcoin. They can't do it. They're not going to do it. But Genie's out of the bottle already. It's, we're past that. So, Yeah, something that requires uh, China to ban it 48 times is not bannable. Right. Pretty interesting. Yeah, All they, right, they, well, won't, they won't even try, though. I mean, that, 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 it, it's different here than it is in China. China. China bans it doesn't really mean it's banned. It's just kind of sort of like frowned upon. It's interesting. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you for your time. Um, everybody that joined us, thanks for uh, sticking with us the whole time and uh, appreciate all your questions. Check us out on chainbytes.com. You can contact us through there. You can follow us on social media, chainbytes everywhere, Twitter, Instagram. And um, yeah, if you have further questions, you could just go to our website and, and put questions in there. There's always somebody around who will answer your question either live or during, during the day or if it's the middle of the night. They'll do it. For, they'll fight over it first thing in the morning. Um, yeah. They'll, they'll get a question. They'll get an answer. Yeah. One of us will contact you pretty early. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night.